okay Instagram. Let's start at the very beginning. This one is really important. Um, doesn't really matter how you feel about me. You gotta watch this if you are a sincere patriot, if you love this country, and if you are a Republican, most importantly, you should be watching this um, because we are all getting played and we are all getting scammed and it is, embarrassing to me that this is something that I uncovered. We have tons of organizations that have you know, raised millions and millions of dollars that should be protecting voters and doing due diligence and getting to the bottom of certain things. Um, okay, so first and foremost, my show tonight is at 9 p.m. Eastern and I am talking about Juneteenth and that is the most appropriate topic to talk about because this is actually what unpacked all of this quite ironically. Um, so those of you that were following this and a lot of people were commenting, didn't know what was going on, were like, oh, conservative infighting. I don't want conservatives to be infighting. You have no idea what you are talking about. This may have started as conservatives infighting. What actually is happening now is that I have stumbled upon something that no conservatives or the majority of conservative Republicans don't know, the majority of conservative Republicans are not aware of, and that I'm actually going to invite all of you guys to join me in investigating because there's so much here that it's overwhelming. Like it's so overwhelming about Kimberly Klasik um, and what the implications are here is that, you know, where there's one, there's many. Um, and so honestly, legitimately, if you have a pen and a paper, you might want to start writing some of this stuff down because you're going to have to then investigate and keep it going. I'm not an investigative journalist, but this is the first time that I'm acting in that capacity. So I reached out to different people and, you know, asked them to clarify what I was reading in terms of these documents to make sure that I didn't make any mistakes. And that was why I wanted to hold off on doing a live because I didn't want to be irresponsible. And obviously the only reason I started this was because of what started as a petty Twitter feud that led me down a path with so many twists and turns. I'm just like, what is happening? This is crazy. All right, so let's start from the beginning. Obviously, there's been this random thing that keeps happening to me where a black conservative will be running for Congress in a random district, you know, somebody that no one's ever heard of, like, you know, great, awesome. They do a catchy video, they raise a bunch of money, and somewhere along the line, they just start attacking me. Like, I'm not their candidate, they're running against in Congress, but they usually just kind of are trying to prove, like, I'm a different black person than Candace, and I really care about black causes. Like, I can probably say, and, and the irony being is that every single one of these black congressional candidates has asked me for an endorsement, okay? Full stop. I could drop, it doesn't matter, it doesn't, like, you know, this is not relevant today, I could drop it, but everyone messages me and says, ask me for an endorsement, oh, love you, would love to connect, and then if I don't endorse them because I actually believe that it's irresponsible to endorse people without knowing them and doing your due diligence, then suddenly it's like, I hate Candace and I'm just going to keep hitting her. So this entire story obviously starts with um, Kimberly Klasik, she notoriously ran in Baltimore, I think she's running again, I don't think she will be after this investigation in this video. Um, but you know, she just came after me on Twitter one day and uh, about me saying that Juneteenth is a scam. It is again, dailywire.com slash subscribe, use my code Chrissy and tonight's episode, I will unpack why Juneteenth is a scam being orchestrated by Democrats. Um, and it's not about celebrating black freedom, but she was upset by these comments and she made an allegation about me and said that, you know, Candace doesn't do anything with the black community. I'm paraphrasing here, but Candace doesn't do anything for the black community. She's not around the black community. Um, and I basically responded and was like, listen, I'm not, you know, a part of the group of people that are grifting hundreds of thousands of dollars from Republicans. And it was this tweet that sent me on a search because she answered, and I want you to look into this yourselves. She answered and she said, well, I actually, I said to her, like, I run a charity. I raise money for, you know, black people whose businesses were destroyed during the Black Lives Matter riots, which I did. We raised over six figures for black businesses that were destroyed. We obviously employ a ton of minorities. It's not a requirement. It just happens to be that usually, you know, a somebody on the ground will get super involved with Blexit and then we'll say we should actually hire them as an employee. So right now, all of our employees, barring one, are actually minorities. It's just, you know, we're in over 30 states. We have state leaders all across the country and we do a very... Is that working? Is everybody getting me on? It just told me that this paused. Um, just want to make sure I get better service. I don't want to start this and then have people say that they can't see things. Um, so, yeah, so basically... You know, Blexit, we're having an event this weekend in Birmingham, Alabama. Like, there's just like, you know, we are doing a ton of work and I've worked really hard to build this organization over the last two years. We officially got our 501c3 last year. Um, that's neither here nor there. So she responded to that and she made a comment that was really weird. 
Uh, she said, I have a charity and I have placed over 200 women, um, minority women into job careers. And I thought that was a strange comment because I know how hard it is to get a charity off the ground. And, you know, I just said something about that just didn't really sit right with me. I was like, oh, I've never even heard about your charity. Like, what is it? And I asked her for the name privately and publicly, and she didn't give it to me, but somebody in the comments gave it to me. Um, and the charity, if you are using a pen and a paper right now, is called, what is it called? Something me, like particular me. It's like something weird like that. I can't think of the name. You guys can look it up. I can't even think of the name of the charity right now. Um, gosh, I should really have this on the tip of my tongue, but it's such a weird name. It's like P something me or whatever. And so I looked into this charity and, you know, just asked her for the tax ID number tons of times. She was like, I can't get it to you right now. I'll get it to you later. Like all of this stuff, just being like, Hey, what's the name of your charity? This is great work. I said, you know, she said that I don't have enough people on my show, um, you know, from underserved communities. So I said, we'll highlight your charity, come on the show. And um, I finally looked into the charity because as a charity, you have to file all of your documents online and it's very easy to discern what's a real charity and what's not. And when I first looked up the charity's name, on a, its Facebook page came, came up. And the Facebook page basically just had her personal cell phone number listed. And it was a bunch of pictures of people that were holding clothes that she had picked up. Like we're picking up more clothes and we're giving them to people. I guess the idea is that she dresses them, um, you know, for their professional career. And so it's very obvious that yes, she has picked up a lot of clothes. That's what you can discern from looking at this charity. Weird thing though, is that when I pulled up the filings, despite this charity being around since 2013, she had only filed three tax returns, which is super unusual. And when I looked at the tax returns, she claims that she made no money last year, no money this year, um, but that she made $6,000 in one year that she filed and that that money was used to help girls get their makeup done for prom. So like nothing close to what she's saying online, nothing about placing women into career positions. I asked her to give me the names of the people that, you know, the, the website is defunct. So there's no website, nothing exists other than her word saying that potential me. Thank you to the person who just wrote that. It was called potential me. So sorry guys, I just like, blew my nose before I came on here. So yeah, it's called Potential Me. Um, and there's nothing, there's no website. She cannot give you the 200 people's names that she placed into professional careers. And she instantly deleted that tweet once I asked her for more information on it. And then I said to her, like, you know, why is the website working? She said to protect the people. Like so somehow she said that people are vulnerable and that even me looking into this charity would make these women even more vulnerable. So she's using this, like, you know, I have to protect the women. I have to protect the women, which is such a tactic. Like, okay, Give me the name of the corporations that you work with, 200 women being placed in jobs. She can't give me anything. And she basically then says, you know, well, I'll have somebody look into your charity. Okay. It's called Blexit. Go for it. We have a whole website. We have employees. Like we do public filings. Like you do your thing. Go look into Blexit. So obviously to me, I then search the chair, like the potential me. And I see that she has a PayPal account. And the PayPal account says that she collects clothes and she sells them on eBay for profit and then she gives the profit to women in need. So that's not what she says on, on Twitter. It's not what she says on her IRS filings. So why is there an eBay account that she's allegedly selling clothes on and where is the money from that account? Because apparently she's only made $6,000 according to the 2014 filings, but the pictures look like she's picked up a ton of clothes. So in my head, I'm like, okay, like she probably is running like a little bit of a charitable scam. Like that was my thought. Like that's my like opinion where she's just picking up clothes and selling them on eBay and pocketing the money. And that's why she doesn't want to give me any names or anything, but like, who cares, right? This is like petty stuff, like in terms of the scheme of things, running a charitable scam for 10 years, you know, it's bad, but it doesn't race to a level of like, oh my God, this is crazy. So I asked her to come on the show and she was very hesitant and said she was booked until August and like said all this stuff. And so I asked her if September would be better. And when I word, said the word September, she freaked out and it was so weird. And she was like, that's not funny. And I was like, what's not funny? Like you just said you were booked till August. Can you do September? And she said, oh, it was this whole legal battle I had, like, never mind." Which brought me to find, after I was looking into her charity, a clip on The View, of all places, where Sunny Hostin is commenting on Kimberly Clasic and she says, like, all I'm going to say is September. Is it September? I'm paraphrasing. Is it September? 
And I was like, what is with this word September? Like, why is this like a Kimberly Clasic buzzword? So I do a little digging and I find out that Kimberly Clasic was a stripper um, named September and that her husband was the manager of the strip club. It's a strip club in uh, in the Baltimore region in Maryland. Um, and allegedly they met stripping and like, she was the person who helped bring a lot of strippers into this club. Um, and so I thought, wow, this is really interesting because this person attacked me and said that I am a bad look for the black community. I'm not good for the black community because I don't want to celebrate Juneteenth. And yet the debauchery that happens at a strip club, the vulnerable women that are at strip clubs, um, and the idea that you married someone who was the manager of the club kind of seems like maybe something relative that Republicans should know. None of them know this. And you've raised $8.2 million talking about family values. And I researched to confirm that her husband was the manager of the club. It was an old listing in the Maryland page, um, Amer Maryland white pages that had him listed as the manager of the club. So all that checked out. Um, and there were pictures of her in the strip club, a lot of pictures of her in the strip club, about five pictures, plus a stripper of her holding a, a picture, sorry, a picture of her holding a bunch of singles, which I will maybe post later. Um, and she's just holding a bunch of like ones and she's in like a very suggested outfit and she's in front of the strip club, um, in front of the strip pole. Um, so just seems a little off brand for someone who has just said, that you know she supports family values and like she really cares about Baltimore. Like if you really care about Baltimore, why why are you in the inner cities doing this? Because we know what strip clubs are about. And that's not to say that you can't be a stripper and reform yourself, but this isn't that story, right? She's not like she's not like she's come out and talked about being a stripper, um, and she's upset that I'm not celebrating Juneteenth and is saying that I'm bad for the black community. So I'm like, that's a little like ironic, right? It's, a, it's just a little bit ironic. Like okay, so. The person, because I wanted to confirm that she was a stripper before I put that, you know, even put that out there, and I wasn't even sure if I was going to put it out there, um, I wanted to source like where these pictures were coming from, and I came across another stripper um, who works at the club, who works at the club currently, um, and I just asked her outright, you know, does Kimberly Clasic work at this club? Like, are these images doctored in any way? And the woman came back and she's a, you know, very proud stripper and she still strips. And she said, they're 100% not doctored. I know her very well. I have partied with her um, in the strip club. Like I've, I've worked with her in the strip club. Um, you know, her and her husband have been scamming people for millions. And she said, and I'm going to be very strong that there's no way that I, Candace Owens, can confirm this. But she said it to me in writing that they used campaign money um, to do cocaine in the strip club. And she said she had, I have all the receipts and I can prove it sort of a thing. And I was like, whoa, okay, well that's different because what this stripper is alleging would be a crime, obviously. And I can't possibly verify that information. Like there's no way to verify that. Give me one second. I just need to like literally blow my nose. Hold on. Sorry, I had like a legit sneezing fest before I went on live, so I was like, I still need to blow my nose. Okay, so the, yeah, so the stripper has like now come and said like she's got all the receipts and like this is now getting like very like, you know, dramatic in terms of like this allegation that she uses campaign finances to do that. And that's a very serious allegation because you're talking about people that are being corrupt with money and you're talking about a lot of Republicans who got scammed. And this actually, like, I was like, mm, I don't really know if I'm gonna report on the stripper thing, but then when the, she said the thing about using campaign money, I then kind of said to myself, what's really funny about what I immediately think about when I think about strip clubs is I think of money laundering. I think of people who hide money. Strip clubs, casinos are like really the number one um, joints, if you will, that people use to launder money because they're very, you know, into cash. It's like, you know, they're cash-based business. and. Um, so in my head, I thought to myself, okay, the charity was a bit weird, seemed like a weird thing to have that wasn't going. So that seems a bit finance buggy weird. And now we have the stripper claiming that she wasn't using her campaign funds appropriately. So obviously the next step to me, the obvious step, and this is where it just gets crazy, insane is let me just look at her filings. Like she just ran for Congress. I'm like, the stripper can't make this allegation. I should be able to see some weird spending on her FEC report. I now invite you all to pull up Kimberly Klasik's 
FEC um, disbursements report. You just have to go to literally FEC.gov. It's very easy to use. It's probably the only easy website our government has. And you can look in the search bar and you can type in Kimberly Claystick. It'll pop up and it will show you every single dollar that she has spent in her campaign because they have to. The irony being that there was all of this firestorm that the left was looking into her campaign financing because she notoriously raised about $8.2 million because of that video of her strutting down the street. Um, and it's a late game in life for like, you know, a 40 year old woman, she's 40 years old, decided she wants to run for Congress and be this vocal Republican. Um, and she raised all of this money and the Washington Post and all these people were looking into the, into her finances and they kept looking at this company that had gotten the most money out of her, like, you know, $4 million. And it actually is a legit company. That's what they determined from all of the search. Like, I know the company, I'm aware of it. So like that actually wasn't shady. It was just that company got lucky because of the way that they structured the campaign. Um, uh, and they got a ton of money. And so the Washington Post kept looking at that company and they never looked at any other company on her sheet. And I did. So the first thing that jumped out at me, I, I basically just sorted it by the most, you know, the biggest checks that she wrote, um, and that were off at her company. And like, yeah, she pays for her manager a ton. Okay, fine. Totally fine. Manager slash treasurer. Um, but the first thing that really jumped out at me on the FEC reports, again, you can look this up yourself, was that on November 5th, uh, you know, after the election, she uh, wrote, they, they wrote off uh, a disbursement for $119,000 plus dollars um, to Pearl Events, that was the name of the company. And if you look at the receipts, she wrote it as a meet and greet. So I don't know, maybe I'm just not rich enough. I can't fathom in my head why a meet and greet with a congressional candidate would cost $119,000. But I tried, in my head, I fathomed, in my head I said, okay, maybe maybe this is for the whole season and this is the only firm she used, Pearl Events, and somehow they you know, are saying it's $119,000, which sounds like a scam to me, like Pearl Events. But then I look further down in her receipt and she's got tons of meet and greets and they all cost $1,000, $2,000. Like, that sounds about right. $119,000 at the very end seems like you're trying to move money off the books to me, right? So I'm like, all right, well, let me look into Pearl Events. That seems like the next logical thing to do. Like, obviously, like, it's a business. So all you have to do, it says it's a Maryland company. She put the address of the Maryland company on there. And so I just looked up, I went to the Secretary of State website because all businesses have to file to maintain, like, you know, their business registration. So I went onto the Maryland website, I look up Pearl Events. And what do I find? I find that this is a company that has been forfeited. It's not a real company. It did not because it refused to file tax returns over years. Maryland revoked it. You know, it's called forfeiting the company. So it's legally not a company. It doesn't exist essentially. And yet she, but of course, if your company gets forfeited by the state, the secretary of state, your bank accounts don't magically close. So whoever closed, so whoever is behind this, you know, still has the bank accounts and they have taken $119,000 from Kimberly Klasick for a meet and greet. Okay. So you're thinking maybe Candace, like, you know, maybe Kim didn't know and she used this company Pearl Events. Well, even more weird is I look into the registration of the company and the formation docs, which tells you what the purpose of the company is. And this company says it's about real estate. So, um, I don't really know what this has to do with a, a meet and greet. This seems pretty shady. Let me see who's signed these docs. Well, it turns out that a, the, even though this company is defunct, you can still look at the Articles of Incorporation. And the Articles of Incorporation indicate that the person, the registered agent on this business is a man by the name of Dus, Dustin, Dusky Holman. I swear, Dusky Holman. I know what you're thinking. You're like, Candace, this sounds like Better Call Saul. Like, I mean, really? That's what I was thinking. And if you look up like the address, it looks like a Better Call Saul. Like, it looks like this is where Better Call Saul was filmed. So I'm like, Dusky Holman is a lawyer. I look it up. He's in Maryland. So I'm like, okay, well, this guy checks out. He's got his name on various things. Like it just sort of seems random, but at least he's a lawyer. And so uh, apparently, you know, lawyers don't do things that are bad, right? Wrong. So I then decide to look up this lawyer and he is suspended. He does, he's not a lawyer that is allowed to practice. So the business doesn't exist. It's been revoked by Maryland and the lawyer is suspended. And yet she has given $119,000 after her election to this random company. So I ask her, like, I'm not even like, I, I say to her a thousand times, like, I'm not here to try to like take you down. I want answers. We deserve answers now because this now went from 
you being really nasty to me on Twitter for no reason uh, to like, this is potentially a federal crime, so you should answer. And I asked her about the stripper thing. I asked her about this random Dusky Holman Pearl events that's not an event company, but did a meet and greet that cost $190,000. She's just wild in the background, by the way. She's just saying like, oh, you're looking into me. Like things must be bad with you and your husband. And I'm like, okay, cool. Anyways, back to this Pearl event. Ooh, and then she's like, oh, well, I'm gonna have people looking to Blex it. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's get back to the stripper claim. And she's just like all over the place in the background, like, you know, like posting stuff and all that stuff. And I'm like, nope, I'm going to stay calm and I'm going to keep looking into this because this is a potentially huge story if we're being scammed. So that entire thing makes no sense. And every single person, every single person who gave a single dollar to her campaign, plus any conservative should demand an answer about that charge. Okay. So let's, you think that's it. It's not, I promise you it's not, it gets crazier. It's, it's about to get crazy. So then I, um, oops, sorry. I think I like accidentally commented on my own thing. So then I keep looking at it, uh, her report. Again, I'm only like five lines down. Like this isn't even like, you know, crazy. I'm like literally like, I'm, I'm still on the first page and I see three accounts again, towards the end of her campaign, three charges off to, for 75,000, um, per a charge off. So 75,000, three times in a row. And that instantly like raised a red flag for me because like, it's just weird to have a flat charge, like $75,000 exactly, zero cents. Like that is a weird charge, right? Like three times in a row. I'm like, what cost exactly $75,000 three times? And then I look a little further down and again, it's $30,000 and it's all going to a company called Fox and Lion LLC. Okay, cool. So got the stripper part, we got this, like now Fox Lion LLC, and these just random charges, right? Like I'm like like an FBI IRA, IRS agent at this point because I'm like, okay, that just seems weird to me. So I'm just going with my instincts and I hit that charge. And it says that this is for canvassing. Now again, you might be thinking, okay, maybe for uh, towards the end of her campaign, like this, they fronted the cost and Fox and Lion LLC did a knock, knocking on doors, canvassing, and somehow it cost, you know, about $275,000 and she's paying them very quickly towards the end of her campaign. Um, and I just said to myself, okay, like it, this still seems like a little weird. So I'm going to look into this company and it seems weird because again, if you look back, she's got other charges for canvassing in Maryland and they seem more appropriate, like $900, $1,000 here, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, that sounds like about the right cost to get people to knock on doors. $275,000 towards the end of your campaign just seems a little high. Like, you know. Again, I don't run for office, so I'm like, maybe this is normal, but this seems like some Maxine Waters paying her daughter type weird stuff. So I'm like, that's my gut. So I'm like, let me go with this because I, I already have seen that this earlier thing with Dusky Holman, Better Call Saul guy, is shady. So I look into Fox and Lion LLC. Get your pens out, ladies and gents. Get your pens out. And it first comes up right away. It's got a Facebook page and the Facebook page is weird because it only has three posts and it says veteran owned, black owned, we'll help you get elected. Like, you know, and we will do like a campaign. So it's pretending at least that it's about politics, but three posts is weird. And I then go to the website of Fox Inline LLC. And the first thing that jumped out at me was this stock photo. Like, I mean, like basic stock photo, like make your own website 101 type stock photo, um, that I literally use in an old blog that I have. And you just get free photos. Um, if you literally Google free stock images computer, like it's like the first one that comes up. And I was like, that's weird because like, you know, if this person's making this much money, like shouldn't this website look a little bit differently? And so I check, you know, the secretary of state again in Maryland to see when this company was registered. It was registered in June of 2020, just a couple of months before her election day. So a brand new company, she decides to go with it. Um, and it says that this company um, is being run by a man named Andy Pierre. Andy Pierre, this is when things get really strange. Andy Pierre ran for a Democrat House seat in Maryland two years ago, in, in, well, technically three years now, in 2018. So, you know, two election cycles ago. Um, and I thought, why would she hire a Democrat, you know, and give them all of this money? And I look at the website and the website claims to have helped people in the past be elected, all of them Democrats, like the Honorable Judge something Talmadge. But when you click the links, they're all broken. And I was like, 
that's weird, Fox and Lion LLC. And there's no way you helped get this person elected because that person's been in office for a while and you have only been in business since June of 2020, according to the Secretary of State filings. So why is this money going to the Democrats? So it's got a number on there. So I'm like, let me just call, right? Ask the manager to call the number. Deadline doesn't exist. Like it just is like, you know, like beep, beep song. Like the summer does not exist. Like it didn't exactly say summer does not exist, but you know what I'm talking about. You can do it. Go to Fox and Lion. Look up Fox and Lion LLC and you will see that it was, it's a completely dead number and there's nobody associated with this except for this guy, Andy Pierre. And if you look at the, where it says it's located, it's a personal address. It's an apartment in Maryland. And so this is clearly to me not appearing to be a real business at all, because if you're making that much money, you just started, but you're making $275,000 from Kimberly Kasich's campaign. Like, I don't know. I just feel like you might have a working number so she can respond to you. So I then go to his con- congressional website from, you know, a couple of years past and it has another number listed. We call it, it says it's his number. A girl picks up and we're like, hi, is, is this like Andy Pierre? And she just hangs up the phone, which was super shady. And so I'm like, okay, this is getting really weird. So I was like, well, now he should have filed his tax returns for the past year. So I should be able to look this up. I'm not going to believe this. I go to the Secretary of State's website and this business is not in good standing because it failed to file tax returns. So this business has been around for less than a year and yet decided not to file any tax returns, which is, you know, her charity didn't file tax returns. Pearl Events didn't file tax returns to God's business broke. Now this new business that she's working with failed to file tax returns despite taking $275,000 from the Kimberly Klasick campaign. So that seems weird. So I message her and I ask her specifically about these two companies because just in that alone, you're talking about someone who's taken about $400,000 and it's just completely been moved off the books late in the game of her election and none of these people can be reached and it just it's like smoke and mirrors it's like you're just it's crazy i'm sitting here like i can't get a single person on the phone i can't get dusky on the phone but he's got one hundred and nineteen thousand dollars of republican money i can't get andy pierre the democrat candidate on the phone but he's got two hundred seventy five thousand dollars of republican money and i now suddenly am blocked on everything as i have asked him these questions I happen to have her number in my phone because she asked me to endorse her. I never answered her or responded, but I asked her directly because I'm like, you know, at this point she's like in the background about the stripper stuff was saying, I'll sue you for defamation. I'm like, can't you just say yes or no if it's true or false? She wouldn't say yes or no, wouldn't say true or false, threatened to sue and then blocked. And so I was like, okay, well, if somebody asked me if I was a stripper, I would just say no. I wouldn't threaten to sue him. I would just be like, no, <laughs> I'm just not. If somebody asked me, if about, you know, random corporations, if they were like, Candace, we saw that Blexit paid X amount of dollars to whatever consultant, I'd be like, oh yeah, we definitely talked to that person. Let me get the treasurer on the phone or someone on the board of directors to tell you why we did that move or how that came about. We have an entire board of directors. So I don't even get to oversee my own salary at Blexit. Like I, I, all of that has to be approved by the board of investors. Um, and so it just like the whole thing was just weird. And so to me, it's weird when you're giving money to Democrats that are running in Maryland, a Democrat run company um, that's happening with Republican values. And it just seems to me a bit like a scam. Like, and again, I have to say allegedly, but I'm giving you the questions that you can go and you can ask, you know, and those questions would be pertaining to potential me while it's why it's failed, you know, how it's somehow made no money, but has as she claimed on Twitter, placed 200 people into positions of power, women, and why they're too vulnerable to ever speak out about the work she's done for them. I would ask about the $119,000, which again, you can see on um, fec.gov, $119,000 to a non-existing business entity because when it is defunct, it is non-existent. So that money was moved off of the books and it is non-existent. That is a good time to ask that question to Kimberly Klasick. And she will not answer me. I've asked her all of this because I did not want to put this out unless I tried to confirm this stuff. She's just blocked and is trying to gaslight. Um, And of course, the last question being, I think the most significant is why is money being moved to Democrats, Um, to a Democrat run business who works to elect Democrats and yet nothing on the website works, which is totally bizarre. And the website says that they'll send out text messages to your campaign, but it looks to me 
like it was just created late in the day to move some money off of the books. That's my conclusion. My feeling is that some money was laundered. That's a feeling. I cannot confirm that, but I would love all of you guys to ask the question to Kimberly Klasik. Bottom line here, nobody knew she was a stripper. Nobody knew she had these businesses. There's so many LLCs involved um, that are being created to help. Um, and I actually had a reporter reach out to me that is on our side and said, I knew this, like I knew this about her, about the stripper stuff and all of this stuff. And basically when I approached her treasurer slash manager, who I also messaged to ask these questions to, and he has not gotten back to me. Um, I was told, well, Kimberly feels used by you in the GOP. And like, how dare you ask? It was perfectly out there about her being, you know, a stripper and, you know, allegedly a madame. And so like he confirmed the rumors, but then kind of gaslit the reporter that was asking and kind of made that, that quiet threat of like, if you say anything about this, we'll just say that the GOP used her and that you guys are racist. And she once said something to that effect, saying that she felt used by the GOP. Um, and I think Harmeet Dillon, the lawyer, came after her quite savagely on Twitter about it being like, people gave you $8.2 million, you spoke at the RNC. Like, how dare you say that we're using you? And what it kind of reminds me of is sort of this new race hustling industry that we're seeing um, that's happening on the right, where people say, okay, I'm going to step on a platform, I'm going to say some Republican things, and no one's going to look into me. And if they do look into me, or they start asking any questions, I'm going to accuse them of being a racist, or accuse them of not supporting me enough. Like, she was one of the biggest campaigns of last year, it's $8.2 million. And why this even though this started as like something stupid on Twitter, it's now spun into a much more serious conversation about why nobody caught this? Like, why did nobody look into this? Like, whose job is it to look into this? It's certainly, I'm a, I'm a political commentator. I write books. I'm an author. I don't, you know, look into every congressional candidate. Uh, how did this slip through the cracks? You know, how did she slip through the RNC cracks? How did this slip through Newsmax has had her on, Fox News has had her on. Like, there are so many huge conservative people that have given her a platform and a voice, including myself. I'm not even excuse myself from that. I invited her to speak at the Blexit event that we had in um, in Baltimore, she no showed it and like ghosted us for 48 hours. But you know, how, how did all of this happen? And nobody looked into this. And then people that did look into it were too scared to say anything. A lot of conservatives knew this and they were scared to say anything because they were getting, you know, implicit threats that somehow even asking the questions were racist. So, um, we have to be careful. We have to definitely be careful because the irony being is, is that all of these candidates that come up and do a quick video and say, oh, I'm saying Republican stuff and I know I've never said this, but I'm saying it and give me money um, are also the same ones that are sowing division. It's the same ones that are sowing division in the conservative movement. I've never had like, you know, Burgess Owens like endorsed him, you know, he's never been like trying to do anything that's crazy or anything like that. Like he obviously, John James, like the people that don't start any problems are probably legitimate people there. To me, this is a new grift. And like I said, when I think of people and this is not to denigrate people that use stripping, as, you know, as a profession to get money, but I think of people that are looking to make a quick buck. Um, and especially someone who, you know, partied in strip clubs, the very least confirm that by the pictures, her and her husband have, have partied, um, at strip clubs, like at the very least, like, how did we not know that so that Republicans could have made a better decision about whether or not this person actually impacts, you know, or, or, or cares about conservative principles when this person talks about family, but did an interview saying that her husband has, you know, five children out of wedlocks. So there's allegedly a domestic violence. If you look up Jeffrey Klasik, domestic violence incident in, in Davidson County. I mean, this is a pretty shady family that popped up out of nowhere and yet took $8.2 million. And I think the thing that really bothers me about this is because for everyone that says like, oh, we shouldn't have any infighting. We should just, no matter what, stand by people. No, like you're so wrong. That's the left defending Hunter Biden, smoking crack pipes and saying nothing about it, right? Like, doesn't matter as long as this person will vote the way we want them to. No, this is how you get people in office that do horrible things or turn their back on the conservative cause because you don't do your due diligence or you're too uncomfortable to have this discussion, you know, to say, you know what, this is actually really wrong and we need to investigate this, right? This is potentially a federal crime that I'm talking about, by the way, potentially. I mean, maybe she's got an excellent answer about, you know, why that money was moved off the books late in the day and why all of these businesses are, you know, not legit 
according to the Maryland Secretary of State. Maybe she has an excellent answer, but if she doesn't, then we're talking about a federal crime. You don't, you don't do something. You don't just move money off the books and give them to a non-existing entity or a business that's not in good standing and have no excuse for it. Um, so for all the Republicans that think, oh, well, you know, it's just drama. Like, no, this is serious. This is serious stuff that we're talking about. And we have to have the spine to stand up, even when you're afraid that Republicans are going to call you racist. If that, if your reason was, I didn't want to be called racist and you allowed this to take place, that's not a good excuse. I had no idea. Genuinely, genuinely until this whole thing happened, I had no idea. If I had had an idea, I would have said something a lot earlier. I had a bad feeling about her in my, in my gut. But I had no proof, so there was no reason for me to say one thing or the other. So I hope that like this furthers the conversation and that we feel encouraged to call out people and we're not afraid. You know, Don't let somebody say to you, oh, well, if you don't agree with Juneteenth and I'm a black conservative, then you don't get it. It's because you're a racist. It's like, no, that's the same stuff we're fighting on the left. You're allowed to think Juneteenth is stupid. You're allowed to call out somebody for a questionable history of creating a bunch of businesses. You're allowed to call out someone's husband for being the manager of a strip club or that person for allegedly being the mad dam of that strip club, you know, whatever, whatever it is. You're allowed to ask questions like you always do it to me. You know, I, it's not about skin color. That's not what we believe in. Um, so, I mean, I guess I will leave the last couple of minutes for people to ask any questions. Um, uh, uh, by the way, I think pretty soon, 15 minutes. Oh, no, 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 no. It's seven o'clock where I am. Two hours, don't forget. Dailywire.com slash subscribe. And you can use my code Chrissy. And I just better see you guys subscribing. I've made such a great show. And this whole episode is me talking about Juneteenth and really kind of that pressure um, to make us you know, feel like we have to support this when we know that there's nothing but a political effort from the left. And we need to stop being bullied by not just you know, liberals calling us racist, but conservatives calling us racist if we don't say what they want them to say. It's the new hustle. Um, any questions? Who's responsible for promoting her? That's a very good question, Julie. Um, everyone. So what happened, if you guys know the backstory, like why, how she kind of got in the mix, Elijah Cummings died. Trump made a tweet about like, you know, how he ruined Baltimore. It wasn't the best timely tweet and everyone was killing him for it. Like, you know, figuratively killing Trump for him. Like, how could you say anything about Baltimore, blah, blah, blah at this time? And Kimberly then popped up and said, he's right. And like, I don't know, did something in like the woods. And then Trump promoted her and was like, great, excellent person. And then overnight, like, you know, then she made a video talking about this is Baltimore. And that video got millions and millions of views and people um, the RNC then invited her to speak. And, you know, I spoke to the RNC about this because I wanted to sort of give them a heads up on this and like ask like, you know, did you do any due diligence? And like for them, they were pulling together this event late in the day and it was like a last second ad. Um, and so, like I said, there's no one to really blame. It's all of our faults. Like, you know, there's no one, like somebody should be responsible for this. And that's why I said that me and Corinne Tatum are actually now going to use Blexit to build an interactive map to tell you about the candidates that are running. Because I also have heard, and I'm not sure, again, you guys be investigators too, look at the FEC.gov filings, um, you know, uh, but also I've heard that she's forming a super PAC with a bunch of other black conservatives that are running that also have questionable backgrounds. I don't know if that's true. Again, I just heard that somebody sent it to me saying that like, it's going to become the new scam of like run a district that you can't possibly win in, move some money off the books to fund your lifestyle in between and then be like, I'm going to run again. I'm going to run again. I'm going to run again. I'm going to keep running. Um, and that's a great lifestyle scam. I mean, bizarre things also on our filings are like a private plane for $40,000. Like why would you need to take a private plane? A $40,000 jet is a big jet. That's not a small jet. That's a big jet, you know? Um, so why did you need to take a private jet somewhere? And why did it cost you $40,000? Now, maybe she had some last minute time thing, but she took multiple private flights. And that seems weird for somebody that's running, you know, for Congress in a district. You know, again, that's small stuff compared to the bigger stuff. Um, but any other questions? Um, sounds like we need an audit of candidates. I agree with this. And actually, Corinne Tatum partners with a guy called California Underground who does videos and explains to you the weird stuff that is on their spending. Because basically what he's saying is that if you're genuine, you're running for Congress, why are you staying at the Ritz Carlton? Why are you like in Kim's thing? In Kim's case, she was staying at the Trump hotel. She said she was doing a, um, not a candidate meet and greet, but like a, a candidate event at the Trump hotel. Like you're running in Baltimore. The Trump hotel is the most expensive hotel in DC or you know, one of the top two most expensive. Like none of that made any sense, you know, but these are, it would be good to have people that were dedicated to looking into the stuff. So I'm going to partner with Corinne Tatum, this guy, California underground who I haven't met because I know that they've been trying to expose a lot of this. And they haven't gotten 
Like I, I should have been blowing these people up for a long time. I watched them and I think it's like hilarious that they're calling out all of these people being like, if you're genuine about running, why do you need to stay in a hotel five days a week at the Rich Carlton type of stuff? And like I said, I think Blexit, if you go to Blexit.com, we actually have an interactive map already. So I think it would be easy for us to just build it out, that feature, and just kind of tell you guys what you need to know, highlight the seats that we think are extremely winnable and the streets are not as likely to be winnable. And by the way, just because it's not likely winnable doesn't mean that you shouldn't run. Um, but I do think that if, imagine if we had those $8.2 million that Kimberly Klasik raised and we had actually allocated the seats that were within just a couple of points of one another. So um, yeah, I guess that would be it. September is a stage name. Yes, that is what I have been told. Um, and as I said, I spoke directly with a stripper that worked with her. So there was like, you know, she was pretty, didn't seem like she liked it very much and was very annoyed at like the whole scam and the hustle of it. Um, why are there never consequences for these people? I don't know, because the majority of people that are criminals are in government. So I guess they figure, how do you prosecute the criminals that are trying to get into government? <laughs> I don't know. That was just me making a joke, but you know. And yeah, who who drain the swamp. We need to spend millions for boots on the ground. I totally agree. Corinne Tatum, 100%. There's a lot that needs to be done. Senator Ted Cruz needs to investigate Kimberly Klasik from the money laundering tax fraud and campaign fraud. Yes. At the very least, it warrants an investigation. And like I said, um, you guys are welcome to look at these FBC filings. Will she be on your show? Nope. She said she's booked till August. She's super busy, I guess. Um, and she's blocked me on everything. And she's reached out to like, you know, other people to like say stuff. She's like, oh, we're going to look into you. And I'm like, bro, go for it. I have nothing to hide. My husband is basically the IRS. This guy, if I am out with, and I have my Blexit card and I'm like, let me get myself a coffee. He's like, well, are you on Blexit business? You have no right. So I don't even use my Blexit card. I have nothing to hide. Nothing, 0%, except we are doing a Blexit rally in Birmingham this weekend. So if you live in Alabama, please come. It's going to be a fun freedom event. doesn't matter what color you are. Everybody's invited to Blexit rallies. Um, any other questions? Yes. I mean, obviously Newsmax will make everybody aware of this, um, so they can all launch their own internal investigations. And by the way, if anything has been debunked, if she's like going to come out and be like, Oh no, I know I gave to this business that doesn't really exist, but this is why I will add that because I'm not trying to, you know, paint her in the wrong light. As I said, I gave her every opportunity to respond. I messaged her privately about this and she gave me no answers and just threatened to sue me and then blocked me. So there was nothing, um, like she could have just said, she could have debunked this privately. This wasn't me trying to like shame her um, without actually doing, I, I mean, I took the basically three days, not longer. I started this investigation during the weekend and yeah, yeah it was Tuesday. Yeah, so it took about four days. Um, thank you so much, Candace, for this much needed. Um, I wish I could be there. Much love for all of you at the rally this weekend. Thank you so much. Oh, Topher Town Music, he is going to be performing. Yes, he said, Angela's commenting. She always is. <laughs> Um, you're the best. Thank you guys so much. Any other questions that you guys have about the Kimberly Klasik thing? Um, yes, Liz, Oana, Newsmax, tag them. Also, I think the Baltimore Sun, um, would probably be a good person. So people just know locally what's going on. And like I said, I hope somebody takes this baton and goes further and just looks more into her FEC filings and all of us as conservatives stand up speak out against the race hustle on the right. Don't be afraid to speak out against people because they're black and conservative because that's a very easy way to protect yourself. Um, and I always expect, you know, people to criticize me. I take it all the time. I know a lot of you guys were like, oh, this is just going to attempt to be like some petty drama. Nope. I'm talking about fraud, plain and simple. And I am tired of it. All right. Anything else? Nope. I don't believe in, we don't think, I don't think we need to cancel Kim. I think we need to investigate Kim. So I'm calling for an investigation. Anybody else, guys, tag me in any more investigations that you do. FBC.gov, do it, do it, do it. Look into more. Whatever it is you find, I will share it. Um, let's clean up the conservative movement from the hustle of constantly running conservatives that have very interesting histories. All right. Say her name, September. I gave Kim 500. Yikes. Ask for it back. Maybe there's something you can do about that. Thank you. All right, guys. I have to go. Bye-bye.